Okay, hello everybody, I'm Conquering History Games, and welcome to Progress Report number uh, four in, uh, for Calter Craig as we, uh, as we continue making our way through these. Um, so this one I think is going to be very long. Uh, just so you know, I am going to actually not only be explaining the lore, I'm going to be doing the audiobook reading style up to 1936, but I'm also going to be um, doing the pre-1936 lore for Sardinia, uh, which seems to be one of the lesser played paths. Uh, actually, now that I think about it, I don't, I can't recall ever seeing anybody on YouTube play uh, the Kingdom of Sardinia in Kaiserreich, so we're going to be explaining the situation uh, in in uh, in Sardinia when it starts in Kaiserreich's timeline up to 1936, uh, basically covering between World War One and, and the beginning of well, what will be or right before what is this world's World War Two. So we're going to be going over all of that, and then we're going to be going into the um, Coulter Craig lore and information. So. I, uh, this is my first take doing this, I, usually I do everything in one take, uh, but I anticipate this might be the longest report yet, and if that is the case, I will probably put some sort of timestamps in the description or in a comment below. If this video goes up and I have not done that, please, um, please somebody comment reminding me to do that. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. We're looking here at the starting situation, um, and then but we're going to first look at the pre-1936 lore. So this is a map of Italy in the Kaiserreich world that probably looks really familiar to you all. Let's go ahead and get started in three, two, one. After the armistice at Venice ended the fighting against the Central Powers, King Victor Emmanuel was blamed for totally mismanaging the war, and Republican and Socialist revolts broke out across Italy. In the north, the New Republic of Italy had most success and drove the Royalist forces out of Piedmont, Emilia, and most of Tuscany. The king and his son abdicated, but this was hardly enough to end the rebellions, and now the Royalists had no head of state to rally around. Returning from the front, Duke Emmanuel Filbert of Aosta took up the defense of Sardinia from any Republican rebels and declared himself the successor to his cousin as King of Italy. He was mostly ignored by the remaining royalist forces on the mainland, however, who eventually, who, who eventually were obliged to join an Austrian project, the Italian Federation, in return for aid in the Civil War. After the Civil War ended in a temporary ceasefire, the Entente forced King Emmanuel Filbert to join the Italian Federation as King of the Member State of Sardinia Piedmont. King Emmanuel Filiberto's government, though indeed part of the Federation and thus not formally able to conduct diplomacy with foreign powers, nonetheless privately reassured the Entente that the alliance between the houses of Savoy and Windsor would remain in place and offered asylum to fleeing French whites. Sardinian troops returning from the war especially the famed Sassari Brigade, soon adopted growing Sardinian regionalism, founding the Sardinian Action Party, a.k.a. the Partido Sardo de Anzion in Italian, Partido Sardo in Sardinian, in, apologies for all pronunciations, by the way, in 1921. The party was promptly forced underground as Emilio Lussu, the party leader, conducted a mostly peaceful resistance against the Italian monarchist occupation. While some in Emmanuel Filberto's government, primarily the royalist refugees from various parts of Italy, still fostered some hopes for a restoration of Savoyard rule over Italy. The recency of the loss to Austria and the syndicalists inclined the government to keep the status quo of remaining part of the federation as Sardinia Piedmont. When the British Empire collapsed in 1926, the Socialist Republic, encouraged by a new member of the International mobilized its military to attack the southern mainland states of the Federation. The Austro-Hungarian Empire was experiencing severe internal turmoil at the time, and the dual war ministry made the decision to withdraw protection from the two Sicilies, prompting an outraged two Sicilies to withdraw from the Federation. Sardinia also declared independence, but did not yet declare itself the Kingdom of Italy restored, as some royalists wanted. While the regionalist parties were, un were happy to be free of the remnants of Austrian influence, they were dismayed at the renewed French alliance and the influx of foreign advisors, which led to foolish reunification wars. 
which might lead to foolish reunification wars. Excuse me. After the Civil War, Sardinia was ruled by a dual French-Sardinian military government and dissent, much of it led by the SAP sword. In 1926, after Sardinia left the Italian Federation and the king subjecting Sardinia as a base to restore a unitary Italy, seemed likely, a peaceful protest started by the SAP led to a revolt nearly breaking out against Emmanuel Filiberto's government, and only French intervention prevented the royalists from being kicked out of power by the SAP. In the Compromise of Alguero, the French forced the king to bring back the suspended Sardinian constitution, first ratified in 1848 after the Albertine Decree. The SAP, in exchange, was allowed to participate in the elections if it shifted rightward, embracing a more moderate platform of independence through the king. Emilio Lusso, disgusted with the sellout, fled to his friends in the SRI. In the first elections in 1927, the SAP won most of the vote, uniting many native Sardinians. The Democratic Sardinian Union, however, stood on a platform of retaking Piedmont and restoring the king's right, full, and constitutional place in government, and won 23% of the vote and the support of the monarchy. Since then, the power of the SAP has only grown, much to Emmanuel Filberto's and, after 1931, the new King Amadeo's chagrin. Though the economy has indeed improved since the catastrophe of the Great Depression and the quality of life has soared on the island, there is much corruption and foreign interests at work in the overbearing SAP. Indeed, Sardinia almost might be called a one-party state, though Amadeo, uh, Amadeo will seize any opportunity to dethrone them. The military of Sardinia is very influential in the political scene, and the most important diplomatic relationship goes to the French attaché in Cagliari. So that's the situation up to 1936. Um, so now we're going to pick up with the actual progress report. So hopefully I remember to put a timestamp here. Uh, the situation of Sardinia and the Savoyard monarchy in 1936 was bleak. With the Socialist Republic ready to take over the island and a deep division between the ruling Sardinian Action Party. We'll actually just go ahead and do this. Sardinian Action Party and the King, many were certain that the country's days were numbered. Shortly after Black Monday, the SAP would be ousted from power, an incredibly bold move by the monarchy that would have certainly caused its demise if not for the support of the remains of the royal army and the Algiers government. The following years would be tense and full of political backroom deals in order to reinforce the Democratic Sardinian Union and weaken the Sardinian Action Party. Ultimately, the scheme would only be partially completed by the time the Second Weltkrieg broke out. In the two years between the Commune invasion of Germany and Entente intervention, the king and the government laid everything on the line. In order to gain popular support for an intervention against Mussolini's regime, eventually the SAP was forced to relent and Sardinia issued an informal declaration of war to the Socialist Republic. Due to its limited forces and resources, Sardinia didn't have the spotlight in the war. However, its soldiers fought valiantly and its commanders made a name for themselves. The king himself, Amadeo, would join the ranks of the army to assist in the reclamation of the mainland. This move, together with the favorable publicity granted by the Catholic conservative government, managed to restore the image of the monarchy in Sardinia and beyond and restore the popularity of the gentleman king turned soldier king. As the war on the continent ended, the Sardinian army triumphantly entered Turin and the reconstruction of Piedmont began. After a round of special elections in 1946, the government formally moved from Sardinia to Piedmont, despite the protests of the Sardinian populace. In this period, the idea to grant Sardinia a special autonomous status started giving support with gaining support within the government in order to both appease the Sardinians and reward them for their support during the Weltkrieg. Antonio Segni, the conservative prime minister, initially opposed the idea. However, with the Republicans in Piedmont and the Socialists forming a common front, and the need to get rid of them becoming ever more pressing, at game start, Segni is now considered whether to support this idea and use the political power gain from the success in Parliament to effectively isolate and destroy the Republican Socialists. This brings us to the starting situation. As we can see, no party has quite enough popularity to rule alone. This is why Segni is hoping to gain the support of the center-left faction of the Christian Democrats and of the Farmers Party in order to pass a Sardinian autonomy bill. However, this won't be easy. Despite the bill failing to achieve immediate widespread support, Segni will not be able to retract the proposal after proposing it so loudly. As such, he will be forced to move a draft of the law to the Chamber of Deputies. The bill will be extremely important to determine how Segni will approach the Republicans. 
If it fails, nothing will stop the iron patient from forcibly or forcefully removing the Republicans, even to his and Sardinia's detriment. Now, you may be wondering how Segni can pass a bill. This is where the Parliament comes into play. Segni will be forced to collaborate with one or more opposition parties in order to pass any law, at least until new elections are held. However, the benefits of the bill passing will be worth the hassle. Should the proposal pass, Segni will be able to use polygny political power gained to effectively marginalize the radical left through <clears throat> mostly legal means. In fact, the Republicans and the Socialists will start to break apart as soon as the bill is passed. The King will help Segni in this endeavor by improving his public image and that of the monarchy, and subsequently that of the Conservative government. The 1949 Elections As the situation stabilizes, Segni will ask the King to formally call elections and use the momentum from the success of the bill to his advantage. What he doesn't expect is the size of the Farmers' Party campaign. The two parties will be the main contenders in the 1949 elections. However, they won't be the only parties running. The Liberal Party will start its own campaign, and the Combatants Party will enter a coalition ticket with the Economic Party to try and sway the right in their favor. However, something maybe more important will happen during the electoral campaign. The Siempre Pronti were trying to build up their own power base and enter a coalition with the combatants and the economics to form a block of the nationalist right. But in doing this, they exposed their violent tactics to the press. As a result, they exposed their involvement in the murders and disappearances of several minor progressive politicians coming mainly from the far left and the Farmers Party, but also from the center leftist wing of the Christian Democrats. Although something more important isn't noticed by the press, but by the Segni cabinet, the extensive secret ties between the Sempre Pronti, some deviant cliques in the secret services, and some major industrialists. After the elections, it will be imperative to deal with this situation, either directly or indirectly, depending on the winners of the elections. On June 2nd, elections will be held. This will unlock a new part of the focus tree. This will allow each party to pursue its own policies and deal with the sorrowful state of the administrative machine. While both parties will ally the liberals of power, the farmers will also ally the action party now independent after the collapse of the CDR, aka the Democratic Republican Concentration, on the condition that the actionists limit their Republican rhetoric. On the other hand, the collapse of the combatants economic ticket will allow the Christian Democrats to form a coalition with the veterans. Both parties have their problems too. While the erratic policies of the farmers will gradually steer the party right to the benefit of the actionists, while also antagonizing the king of the Senate, a victorious Segni will be forced to resign after it becomes apparent to some of his ministers that he knows more about the triangle of death and the Sempre Pronti affair than he wants to admit. This, in turn, will trigger a row of weak and short-lived governments, ending with the eventual return of Pella prior to the 1954 elections. These elections will have an interesting result, and a lot of paths may open afterwards. However, they will not be revealed for now. Failure of the Autonomy Bill What happens if the Sardinian Autonomy Bill doesn't pass? With the Republicans reinvigorated, Segni will try and activate Operation Checkmate Contingency Plan Number 3 in order to obtain extraordinary powers and forcefully purge them. While at this point his executive is doomed, our choices in the following event chain will determine who will succeed him, be it General Roeta or the leader of the opposition, Alessandro Scotti. Should the opposition come to power, a wide coalition will be formed consisting of liberals, republicans, and farmers with the external support of the socialists. This will encounter the fierce opposition of the right and the senate, as well as the military, and Scotty will start uh, suspecting that the secret services are plotting against him. And rightly so. As the pressure mounts, Scotty will cede and will be replaced by Ferruccio Barri, leader of the Democratic-Republican concentration. Unlike the other main actors, Pari is a die-hard Republican, 
With the support of the wide coalition, he will propose a referendum on the monarchy. Alarmed, the officer cliques that were already planning a coup against Scotty will accelerate their scheming and try to overthrow Potty, failing. In this turn of events, the king will be confronted by an enraged Potty and will be accused of being behind the attempted coup, hard pressed and with the hardly regained prestige of the monarchy rapidly fading. Amadeo will flee the country, and the Republican government will be free to join the Italian Republic. Military Coup However, should the scheming officers gain the Accord's support, they will successfully overthrow Potti, putting Roata in charge. Should General Roata come to power right after Segni or by coup, he will rapidly start consolidating his power and harassing the radical opposition to restore stability. However, he will be too fast. He will ask the king for extraordinary powers, but this request will be refused. In a revolutionary move, Roata will simply bypass the king and obtain extraordinary powers by forcing a packet of special laws through a relatively loyal parliament. This will anger the leftists and the republicans and the paramilitary organization of the Sardinian Action Party. The gray shirts will mobilize against the government, starting a republican insurgency in southern Sardinia, which you can see there in the kind of light green. Should the insurgency last too long, the Republicans will seize power and they will be free to join the Republic. With Ro when Roata defeats the insurgency, his tree will be unlocked, ruling by decree, and with a loyal parliament, Roata will be free to try and mold the state for a while. However, it will soon become apparent he is blatantly trying to copy the German Einheitsfront. At this point, the king will intervene with the support of the military and appoint Antonio Toselli in his place, bringing about emergency elections and the restoration of democracy and getting you back to the normal democratic tree. Whew, anyone else getting dizzy? Secret Services Crisis. As we talked about before, whatever party wins the elections will have to deal with the Secret Services Crisis, and they will do so through this tree, which will allow you to reform the Secret Services and will eventually give you access to various Armed Forces subtrees after the 1954 elections. However, the question of the secret loyalties of the intelligence service will not be completely solved and will return later on. Sadly, that is beyond the scope of this progress report. Reconstruction and economy. Now, you may see that there's another problem in Sardinia in 1948. That is, its industrial base being all but completely destroyed following the war. While the island of Sardinia was virtually untouched by the war, the industrial power base of the country lies in Piedmont, that being the power base of the Socialist Republic II, which was leveled. The reconstruction of Piedmont will in fact be the main target of the initial industrial tree, which will be unlocked by the Restagno report. This will in turn happen some months after you complete the State Properties Commission, and it has been established through the relevant focus in the political tree. You might see that the Restagno report splits the initial spirit into three modifiers, each dealing with a different aspect of the reconstruction. The reconstruction itself, number two, the collapsed railway system, and number three, the banking crisis. To get rid of these, two mechanics will come into play. The IRI, or the Instituto de Reconstrucción Industrial, and the Sardinian Railway Program. The former dealing with the banks of the reconstruction, the latter dealing with the railways. The two mechanics are interconnected. Should the IRI have a big enough surplus, you will be able to invest that money into the railways. You might also have noticed that the hands-off approach focus is mutually exclusive with the restore the IRI focus and seems to lock you out of most of the tree. That focus might lead to some interesting scenarios, but this is a topic for another time. Of course, despite how turbulent the internal politics of a nation may be, if it, if it doesn't have interesting foreign interactions, it will be very boring to play. And while being a relatively weak state will impede Sardinia from being one of the dominant players in the Kulturkrieg, the small country will have an important role in determining the future of Italy. From rekindling relations between the various administrations of the peninsula in the most Italian way possible, football diplomacy, the ambitions of Sardinia will grow together with those of its pan-Italian administration and the House of Savoy. As certain events play out, 
uh, the ambition, this ambition might get closer to getting realized, the restoration, in its fullest. Uh, to finish off, here is a collage of all possible Sardinian prime ministers between 1948 and 1954. Some of them have been mentioned, some not, but can you name them all? And that's it. So yeah, as you can see, this is an absolutely massive uh, tree. There's a whole lot of things going on here. We didn't even get into the details of a lot of this starting situation. So for example, there's this Sardinian dilemma national focus, which is making radical socialist uh, support grow while also um, you know, laming your uh, daily political power gain. There's the collapse industry that we talked about, but you definitely, definitely should go check out this particular progress report. Read it. There is a whole lot happening there. For example, right here, you can uh, they have breakdowns on uh, details of every single one of the political parties, uh, you know, from the social liberals to the national populists to the authoritarian Democrats and the, the royalists and etc. etc. That's it for today. I'm Conquering History Games. Thank you very much for joining me for another report. And be sure to uh, subscribe and click the bell so you'll always be notified whenever a new one of these reports goes up. Happy to hear any constructive criticism, and I'll see you all next time. Bye.